my dear brothers and sisters, all thanks and praises belong to Allah. We seek his help and forgiveness, and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and from the consequences of our evil deeds. And whosoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whoso Allah leads astray will never find guidance. And I bear witness that there is no God but Allah alone without any partners, and I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is his servant and in his and his messenger. My dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum again. Uh, alhamdulillah, I am very grateful. I am once again able to sit here with you, and I have the privilege to share with you at least some of my reflections, the ruminations that I've been doing, at least on the divine names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And today I'd like to continue that journey talking about uh, two names, inshallah, al Hay and Al-Qayyum. Al-Hay means the living, the everlasting. Al-Qayyum means the self-existing, the self-sustaining. So in the Quran, we see these two names of Allah placed together in the form of Hayyul Qayyum, ever-living, all-sustaining. In Surah Taha, verse 111, we find a verse, and all, all faces will be humble before the ever-living, all-sustaining, and those burdened with wrongdoing will be in loss. So again, another example of a verse that talks about the Day of Judgment, which is just a recurring theme in the Quran. But let's look at this verse as a starting point to think about the two beautiful names of Allah that we're talking about today, which is Al-Hayy and Al-Qayyum. So these names uh, relate to life and sustaining life. So Allah is ever living and Allah is all sustaining or self-sustaining. So we begin to understand that Allah was there before we existed and Allah will continue to exist for all of time. In the context of life, time is actually a pretty fascinating point to ponder about. So while life on earth is finite, time is infinite. And by time, I don't mean the clock. I mean, the clock is you know, our way to commoditize time. It is a way for people to quantify something that is unquantifiable. It only has 24 hours, and that's how we just keep running our lives. But also internally, our biological clocks tend to work around it too. But going back to the clock, a clock is a way for a business to pay us for labor or us to coordinate activities uh, in different parts of the world and across time zones. But time was there before clocks were invented, and time will continue be, to be there even after the Day of Judgment. How do we know this? Because we have time in this world, and we spend the time we have in this world until we are no longer in this world. Then we will spend our time in the hereafter where we will live for the rest of eternity, and time will continue to exist wherever we are in the hereafter. So in essence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the master of time. We can also say that Allah, uh, that with Allah, there's no past or future, there's only the present. And every second that passes for us brings us closer to the second when we will cease to exist. So furthermore, without time, it is impossible for us to experience life or have the consciousness about the experiences we have in our lives. So let's unpack that for a second. If, if it wasn't for the passage of time, we would not have the self-awareness to the things that happen to us, the thoughts that enter our minds, or the ideas that grow in our minds. So in one aspect, time is our life experience. I'm sure we all have at some point heard the adage, you are what you eat. It's a popular one. I mean, who has never tried to die, right, at some point in their lifetime. So you are what you eat is a at least in our culture here in America, should be pretty well known. Time is similar in that we are what we choose to spend our time on. So if we choose to spend our time in grief, 
then our experience is going to be of grief and sadness. If we choose to spend our time building knowledge, then our experience is with knowledge. And similarly, if we spend our time having the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or our creator, then our experiences is going to be one of being connected to our creator or connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we think about all the gifts that Allah has bestowed upon us. If we ranked those gifts, life would probably be at the very top of that list for most of us, if not all of us. Uh, Ibn Taala in his book, um, Kitab al-Hikam, or the Book of Wisdoms, tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us three charismatic gifts. And these gifts collectively uh, make up the limitless goodness and excellence for anyone who makes themselves available to receive these honors. Now that's an important concept, to make ourselves available to receive these honors or gifts. So what are these gifts that uh, Ibn Atala is, is uh, describing in these Book of Wisdom? Is the first gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is the ability to invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our tongues, our limbs, and our heart. And if it was not for the mercy of Allah, our body parts would not be able to invoke the worship of Allah. So think about your salah, the movements within that salah. You know, we didn't exist in our current form by accident. This is very deliberate from our creator. It is the perfection of the form that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said is perfect for worshiping or invoking Allah's name many, many times a day. And it is because of Allah's mercy that we are here. We have our form in the way it is, and we have the consciousness of Allah. So our ability to worship Allah is indication for us that you know, we are not from among those who Allah has misguided. We could have been from among those who are in a state of forgetfulness of Allah. We could have been distracted, losing our attention to the world. Yet, here we are, spending our time together in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sharing these words of reminders with one another. So just right there, we have made ourselves available to receive this gift from Allah and have that level of honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator. So just being in that, in that space, in that presence, is, is just all we needed to do to receive this gift. The so second gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us, according to Ibn Taala, is telling us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers us when we remember him. And how do we know this? In Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 152, we are told, Remember me, I will remember you. Could there be a greater honor than knowing that the creator of the universe, the master of the day of judgment, is remembering us thinking of us when we think of him. So if you think about people, when they get so excited, I mean, you have a celebrity, okay, I wanna take a selfie, I wanna hang out with them. Even in that moment when you meet that celebrity or anybody famous, that person doesn't really know who we are. That person doesn't know who you are at all. They just see there's another fan, there's another somebody who is looking to just bump shoulders with them, say hi to them, take that selfie, and that famous person knows that, you know, you want something from them. You just want that two seconds or five seconds where you can take that picture, that perfect picture. And then you get that excitement, you get that buzz, and then you're going to move on. We find so much excitement in something like that. And then what do we do? We take that image, we post it on social media, and then we get a second hit of excitement when people start liking that image. So not just one hit but two hits at least, right? Now, the question that I ponder about is, you know, how is that gonna help us on the day of judgment? Those likes on our feed, those hits of excitement when people see us with that celebrity. Now, what if the judge who is presiding over the day of judgment knew about us, knew who we were? Think about that for a moment. What will be our excitement level if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew us because of our dhikr? And it's not like Allah doesn't know that we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows that we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's, that's not a secret. That's not, in fact, Allah is willing to give and give more than what we expect or anticipate. How powerful, how powerful of a feeling is that compared to one 
with the celebrity. Right? So just you know, something to reflect on. And the third gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on us is that He subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers us in a gathering of angels when we remember Allah in a gathering of people. And this can be found in uh, the Hadith collection of Sahih Muslim, um, as reported by Abu Huraira and narrated by our beloved Prophet وسلم, that Allah has said, I am near to the thought of my servant as he thinks about me. And I am with him as he remembers me. And if he remembers me in his heart, I also remember him in my heart. And if he remembers me in assembly, I remember him in assembly better than his remembrance that is in an assembly of angels. Meaning, now subhanAllah, Allah is honoring the believer in a gathering far superior to anything we could assemble. And to receive this honor, Allah is telling us that all we must do is sincerely be in the remembrance of Allah, surrounded by those who are also seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his remembrance. And I know this is, uh, you know, the month of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he was born. Alhamdulillah, we've already seen many different gatherings like this take place in the Austin area, at least. And I'm sure there's many gatherings like that happening all across the country, perhaps all even all across the world, in fact. So this is just an opportunity for us. I mean, it doesn't have to be the month of Rabiul Allah. It could be any time of day. Just sit down and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You find a bunch of people just like you wanting to remember and spend that time in the remembrance of Allah. And that's a great way to spend your time. And we are told that, you know, nothing in this world comes for free. Another old adage. We hear this, you know, pretty regularly. Yet we are being given three gifts from many, many gifts that Allah has bestowed upon us. If only we would just sit down and contemplate. And Allah is not saying, you know, I don't want you to be in paradise. Allah is saying, I want you to be in paradise. Here's what you have to do. Here's the recipe. Here's the prescription. So to find ourselves in, the, in paradise on the day of judgment, inshallah ta'ala, all we have to do is choose how we want to spend our life and our time. And, you know, my dear brothers and sisters, if we read the Quran, we'll find many references to the day of judgment, which is another way of saying many references to death. However, when Allah talks about the day of judgment or paradise or death, it is a reminder to all of us that we will find ourselves in a different place after we leave this world. Uh, and for those who believe, then that place is real for us. And, and you know, if we think about time, the time that we have here in this world, um, one example that I've heard is that time is like a file. You know, it's filing us down constantly. It's not like an instant destruction. It's constantly wearing us down with every passing moment. And if we're not paying attention to what is happening to us, then we are heedless. We have only ourselves to look at and blame. And we are letting everything else around us take us away uh, from our attention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, one of the definitions, if you open the dictionary of attention, is courtesy. It's giving respect. So when we give our attention, not just to our, our friends and family members or our peers, we're actually extending respect. So by giving our attention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're giving respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And on the day of judgment, we will all be brought to attention. Just like this, we will all be brought to attention. So is it not better for us to be in attention before we are brought to attention? So if we think about, you know, going back to this concept of death real quick in the Quran, it's not a morbid reference to death. It's actually a reminder that, you know, this, this world will end. Everything will come to an end. Connect with the Quran, connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like we're connecting right now with the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Connect on a daily basis. Remind one another. Uh, about connecting. And this reminder is a way for us to, uh, you know, hold each other to account, bring each of us to attention before it is too late to act. You know, there is no beginning or end to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah just is. And before Allah, there was no life. And life exists because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is the agent of life. So how do we even begin to appreciate then the names Al-Hayy and al qayyum you know, just starting by having that awareness that Allah is the one who created us and everything around us and having the awareness that we sustain, that we are sustained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the knowledge that we exist, just having that awareness is the most basic form. And as we grow older, our brains grow, our bodies grow, we eventually become aware of our mortality and the end of our sustained existence. Um, 
we begin to see how our experiences has chained us, how the passage of time has filed us down, kind of like sand on a beach, you know, washing away with every wave that comes by, you know, slowly we too are withering away. And there's a beautiful verse in uh, Surah Al-Furqan, Put your trust, put your trust in the ever living who never dies and glorify his praises. Sufficient is he as all aware of the sins of his servant. So here we are told that we should place all our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's nobody better than Allah in dispensing our affairs. When we need help, the first thing we must do is to explain the situation to someone, bring them up to speed, and then they can help us. With Allah, he's all aware about the affairs of humankind. No explanations needed. So my dear brothers and sisters, Prophet Sallallahu loved calling out the names al Hay and al Qayyum. You know, if you look at uh, verse 255 in Surah Al-Baqarah, many of you will recognize this verse. And this is uh, the verse that our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, or called, you know, the greatest verse in the Quran, the verse that is also referred to as the verse of the throne or Aytul Kursi. And in this verse, uh, Allah is referenced as Al Hayyu and Al Qayyum. So, you know, if, we're, if you've not already done so, I, I encourage all of you to memorize this one verse. It's the longest verse in the Quran, and it is a verse that many scholars recommend that we should recite after every salah. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll read this verse and I'll translate it as I go along. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al Allah, there is no God worthy of worship except Him, the ever living, all sustaining. La taqzuhu sinatun wala no. Neither drowsiness nor sleep overtakes Him. Lahu ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard. To Him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. Manzalazi yashfahu indahu. Who could possibly intercede with him without his permission? He fully knows what is ahead of them and what is behind them. But no one can grasp any of his knowledge. Except what he wills to reveal. His seat or kursi or throne. His seat encompasses the heavens and the earth. And the preservation of both does not tire him. For he is the most high, the greatest. Every time I read that verse, I, I get small chills. Uh, I don't know why, but it's just something that happens. And I'm sure some of you probably have similar experiences as well. So for me, there are many reminders in this verse. And one of the reminders in this verse that any knowledge we receive is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And only if Allah wills it for us, that we can have it. So we take the existence of knowledge for granted. So let us, inshallah, remind one another that even the ability to memorize this verse, understand this verse, and apply this verse is because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Allah has willed it for us. And going back to Ibn Taylor, you know, the first gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is the ability to invoke Allah, our capacity to learn. Our capacity to learn using our brains is a gift in and of itself. So we are given this honor when we use our gift to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah elevate uh, our understanding of the Quran so that we may all begin to and continue to live our lives under the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in knowledge and give us wisdom. And that is, give us the ability to apply this knowledge when we need it the most. أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. Let us pray, inshallah. So, uh, let us pray, inshallah, that um, um, we all find the strength to stay firm on the path of Allah, and may Allah subhanahu wa taala forgive all of our shortcomings. ربنا حب لنا من زواجنا وزرياتنا كرة يوني وجعلنا للمتقين إماما. ربنا فاغفر لنا زنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار. ربي جعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن زرياتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا عليك توكلنا وإليك أنبنا وإليك المسير ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للذين كفروا واغفر لنا ربنا إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم 
ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وان لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا امنا فاغفر لنا وارحمنا وانت خير الراحمين ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين امين يا الله bless you all on this blessed day and may you all have a wonderful week ahead i mean